We're back from the vodka fueled haze of Moscow. Uh, we survived. We did not end up in the gulag, despite thinking we were going to end up in the gulag when we were going through exit security. You'd think it would be easy to leave a place, but it was actually harder than getting in. Um, got a lot of scrutiny. I got one of those special handling tickets. I have a meat stick, uh, just in case anybody wants a, a meat stick. Uh, th this, this is actually a meat stick for cats, I was told, but uh, they're really tasty. I, I didn't realize they were for cats until I'd already eaten a whole box. But, you know, hey, it, it's a meat stick. What are you going to do? But today on SDL, Russ and I are going to talk about machine learning in the context of the book Minority Report, because uh, Russ actually read an article about the NYPD, I've read it since then, about the NYPD and their use of predicting behavior behavior of potential criminals. And so we're going to actually, we've been seeing that kind of stuff in China and other places. So today we're going to talk about it on Secure Digital Life. Stick around. This is a Security Weekly production. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. If your users are going to keep putting risky stuff on your machine, you're screwed. So talk and help us understand the, the complexity of blockchain. I was reading through the show notes, man. And oof. In binary, it would be zero, zero, one. Uh, who cares? But <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not significant anyway. Be like you're looking out through the howl dot, you know, like, oh. hey, Dave, yeah. Dave. It's like Sim, but with, you know, It would be like I Sim. Instead of only, it's only. only. Accredited by Microsoft, Cisco, NetApp, IDLE, Oracle, and EC Council, QuickStart delivers high-impact, low-cost IT training through its cognitive learning platform in multiple domains. With QuickStart, you get an ever-growing catalog of courses, self-paced courses offered through a monthly subscription, virtual classrooms offered through an annual subscription, peer-to-peer -peer learning, mentoring, official courses, certified instructors, hands-on labs, and more. For more information, visit www.quickstart.com. Use coupon code PAUL20 to get 20% off on all all cybersecurity courses. Quick start, creating world-class technologists. Hello. Register for our upcoming webcast with logarithm and recorded future by going to securityweekly.com slash webcast. If you have missed any of our previously recorded webcasts, you can find them at securityweekly.com slash on demand. We just released our 2019 Security Weekly 25 Index Survey, so you should please go to securityweekly.com and click the survey link to help us understand who's evaluating using or formerly used any of the Security Weekly 25 companies. The results will be summarized by Paul himself and presented back to all responders in a pri private webcast, also with Paul himself and Meat Sticks. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't get enough meat sticks yeah, with those webcasts. We'll send you a free cat treat. If hashtag you, meat stick. Hashtag meat stick, yeah. And I don't, I don't want to, I'm not following <laughs> that. No, I, I don't want to know where that ends up. Well, Russ and I came back from Moscow. We went there. I would recommend it. It was nice. Uh, yeah. I wrote a blog about it. Yeah, I saw it. P yeah, P it was on pattyj.com. Yeah, so it, yeah. if you if you go to pattyj.com, you can read my blog yeah. and see some pictures of Elektrozavodska. Elektrozavodska, which, which means light bulb. Light bulb uh, street. I thought it meant hydroelectric because voda is water and yeah. electro is... I also heard it meant power plant, so I don't mm -hmm. know exactly what... But the, uh, the girl at the restaurant told me it meant light bulb street. So. Well, but a light bulb is kind of... Well, not really, but... But anyway, whatever. it was a train station, and I got off there and walked around because I was like, I like the name so much. That, yeah, uh, and that I was I, too tired to do it. Yeah, so. he was too tired to do it. It, but I, I went to Lightbulb Street. I'm a big wuss. Yeah, I went to Lightbulb Street and you walked did, around yeah. and, uh, and ate some borscht and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So. Beautiful subway stations. Yeah, no, they have all cool Art Deco uh, subway stations. They have snow. Uh, uh, Lots of snow. Vladimir Putin. And we can talk about them now because they, they said Putin just yesterday. Putin passed a law that says you can't criticize Russia. And you'd be arrested for criticizing the state. And I was like, well, now, now but we're not there anymore. No. So if, if, if you see jackbooted thugs kick the door in, you know, <laughs> but I didn't see any jackbooted thugs in Russia. I, I thought it was very no. nice myself. And, and by the way, the people were pretty cool. I mean, oh, everybody it, was yeah. super nice. I didn't have anybody be rude to me. I, 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 I was a lot ruder in customs at JFK than, uh, yeah. than anybody in Russia. Your was quad S ticket. Even though I didn't speak. Yeah, I had my hiss ticket. That, I had an airplane ticket. had S's on the bottom, which means you're screwed. Just bring a bag that too, has too many zippers and they'll uh -huh. let you go. Well, 
Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, so that's that's a big uh, terrorism tip number one. Yeah. Uh, it's like lots bring them back with lots of zippers, and they just go, yeah, okay, just go, just go. Yeah. I guess I looked harmless, but but you know all that fun well, stuff. Well, looks can be deceiving. It's true, and and you know, but I didn't get the full cavity search <laughs> I was hoping for. <laughs> and, uh, but, the white uh, glove treatment. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, so today uh, we read this article about the NYPD using. Um, and, and, and I, I, I read the articles twice because I really wanted to, to get a grasp of what they were doing. W one, before anybody gets all paranoid about it, they're not doing anything anybody wasn't doing before. Uh, so, I, you know, the ACLU was talking about it. There was a bunch of other people talking about the NYPD's use of this algorithm. So it's a machine learning algorithm to uh, predict behavior. Yeah. And so I, I immediately, the minute I hear predict behavior, I think about Minority Report. Yeah. And, and it was a movie, but uh, way back in 1956, Philip K. Dick, who's one of my favorite authors, Me too. Uh, who also wrote The Man in the High Castle, which is a TV show, the series that's based on that now. Um, but Philip K. Dick wrote a story called Minority Report. Mm -hmm. And it's a really cool story if you've never read it. And it's basically, uh, I, I like it better than a movie, but it's basically about the police using uh, what are in the in the book are called precogs, which are these people that can see different futures. So they don't necessarily know what's going to happen. They just see possibilities, and they're laying in this big tank of water. And they they when they see something that's going to happen, they actually then create a minority report, which re results maybe in somebody being arrested because they're going to do something. Mm -hmm. So th this was immediately I started thinking about uh, about that. And I started thinking about nosedive on, oh, on yeah. Black, Mirror, Black Mirror, which yeah. again is very relevant to that. And I started thinking about China. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started thinking, and we were in Russia when, when we started talking yeah. about this. And, and Russia is another state that where it, it's, I mean, it was a very nice place, but it is an authoritarian state. Um, the government has a great deal of power. Uh, I don't know that Russia is doing the same thing China is doing, but it wouldn't shock me a bit. Uh, but, but China has put a system in place where they actually have a good citizen score. Mm -hmm. uh, and your behavior can determine your good citizen score. And your, your bad behavior can re reduce your score to a point where you can't do anything. Yeah, that score is um, I I intricately related to whether you can get loans or whether or, you know, jobs. Yeah, and they were saying and even like the, there's some potential in it that you wouldn't be able to buy train tickets because yeah. your score is so low. that in Which and I was like, well, okay, that's nosedive. Yeah, it's like, nosedive right there, yeah. So... Uh, so I immediately was was right back on this thing with Minority Report in relation to this uh, this police idea. So the so the concept of the in what the NYPD was doing was they took many many years of data, mm -hmm. and they fed it into a machine learning algorithm, which then attempted to pr find patterns in the data, and they immediately resulted in a an arrest of someone who was who was committing crimes because. It found very high similarities yeah. uh, in those crimes. The example that they used was they connected two seemingly unrelated crimes of, of somebody who was uh, going into two separate Home Depots, stealing a drill and using a syringe. Now, I don't know what the hell. What, what are the, oh, I can't say that. I don't know what uh, on earth. You can say what the hell. <laughs> I don't know what on earth uh, they were using the syringe for. I mean, were they drugging somebody? I mean, pass out. It's like, like the, come here. The Jeffrey you know, Dahmer toolkit. Yeah, it's know. like, I need a drill and a syringe. Uh, yeah, but I mean, how, how well far are you willing to go for a $60 DeWalt? You know, uh, I don't really know. I but don't, don't this cost more than that? Yeah. Well, they can, but anyway. Well, if you're going to so, steal, you steal the best. Yeah, the idea was that they connected these two seemingly unrelated crimes right. because of the, you know, the patterns that they found. And, and so the immediate sort of, I guess, twist on the story or the bent of the story was that this is this horrible, you know, advent of the future and, you know, and all these things. But, but I, I didn't read it that way. I, I mean, the way I read it straight up was that they were just using, they were using technology in a way that they had always used technology. I mean, police have been looking at, at patterns for a long time. Now, the sort of creepy part of it is that as, as data starts to expand and, and police and everybody else has more and more access to everything about you, that's where it starts to get in. It starts to bleed over into the minority report yeah. uh, model. But, but here's the other side of it. So just, just the, this is the sales pitch side of it. What if you could have predicted the Holocaust? I mean, what if, what if through data you had all this data on, on Hitler and, and Goebbels and Himmler and all these guys, and you could literally say, well, you know, based on these 17 key factors, we predict that this guy is going to kill an awful lot of people in the future. And, and you say, well, okay, well, we could go stop that right now. And we could go arrest this guy and say the potential for you to do this is, is there. So we're going to stop you, which is the premise yeah. of Minority Report. Yeah. I mean, the whole and Philip K. Dick was a real paranoid. I mean, he had this big thing about the government. He didn't. He didn't like. He was, he was a guy of the '60s. He was, you know, radical. Yeah. 
and he was really preaching about uh, you know, he, he was trying to push this moral idea of, of it's this ethical dilemma of, well, is your privacy worth it if you could save a bunch of lives? And, and I, I mean, I, I really have mixed feelings about that. I mean, there's this sort of privacy hacker part of me that says, wow, that, that's, yeah, that isn't cool. Uh, I don't like the idea that they just suddenly decide that, that, that you may, may do something and then you, know, you yeah. can go do it. And, and in the United States, so we're pretty U.S. centric here at Security Weekly, um, because we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of experience with uh, like other laws. But in the United States, anyway, the police can't really do anything to you, theoretically, uh, unless you've actually done something. Right, you have to commit the crime. So you can th if, if you threaten someone, it, it's very right. difficult for them to take action. I mean, I've seen that over and over again. Uh, there are laws now that are trying to help with people that have domestic violence situations and things like that. But, but I mean, what if you could predict domestic violence? You could say, well, based on this person's, you know, their profile, their social media, all this stuff, we can say your score says that you're very likely going to commit an act of domestic violence sometime in the next two years. We're going to come arrest you and give you treatment. Or all vegetarian painters who wanted to go to architecture school, but their parents wouldn't let them. Well, you're going to kill, you know, 100,000 exactly. people. Exactly. Right? So. Yeah. I mean, and of course, then based on that, yeah, it would be bad. So mm -hmm. if you're a failed artist, vegetarian, who's really into Nordic runes, you might have a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I mean, yeah, but like, uh, think about drunk driving. I and mean, what if you could predict with, with big data? So you've got people's insurance. I mean, now, now we don't really have that, but, right. but let's just say, I mean, it's, it's that close. I mean, we're really that close to that, that world. If you took my insurance data from my whole life, which is out there, you took my arrest record from my whole life, which is out there. I don't have one, but, but if I did, you take my voting history, you take my purchases, because here, here is the other thing I was thinking about in Russia. Uh, my credit card company ha can show you that whole trip. Mm -hmm. They can show you how I got there. So they can say, oh, he flew out of JFK. Yep. He went to Vienna and, and ate some food. And then he flew to Moscow from Vienna. And he bought vodka at this place. <laughs> and he bought cigars at this place over here. And they ate in this restaurant and that restaurant. And they did this. And then they flew back through Munich. And they flew back to JFK. And they drove home on I-95. Yep. Uh, now, Russ bought the gas, so it threw the whole model off, so that's why I'm not in jail right well, now. Well, now they can implicate me with you oh, as yeah, so an we're accomplice. all going to jail yeah, together. So we're screwed. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. But, but they had all that in the credit card data. Put that with my insurance history, my arrest record, and who knows what other factors, because that's the whole point of machine learning, is that machine learning can take these crazy gigantic data sets and try to find patterns in them. And maybe none of those things that I mentioned to you would be the thing that predicts I'm going to drive drunk on St. Patrick's Day. Right. Maybe all of that came from the fact that, you know, I bought a lot of booze at a liquor store last week or something completely different from that. The, the fact that, you know, whatever I've done, that I had this degree and I went to this school and, and all these things and I'm, I'm this age and whatever, all those may mix and match to form yeah. a predictor. And that's, that's where it starts to get a little creepy. I mean, I, because I could see that coming about, right? So to go back to your insurance example, they actually do imp, uh, incorporate something similar to that. And, and car insurance companies use this thing called uh, loss statistic. And so when you call up the company, their, your rates either go up or down, depending on how many accidents you've been in. But more than that, it, they actually go up or down related to how, well, you know, the, the prediction about how many other people are going to get an accident right. around you calculated by this one particular statistic called the loss statistic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when my insurance went up $45 uh, uh, a payment, you know, a couple of uh, years ago, I called them up and they said, oh, yeah, it's not all about you. It's about the people around you and what probability they're going to get into accidents. I'm like, fantastic. Exactly. Oh, I don't like it. Well, move you're somewhere not a drunk, else. but everybody yeah. around you yeah, is. Right. But now listen, so, so just to, to, again, put this in context, though, the, the la the, the, so don't don't panic. So people have been doing this as long as there's mm -hmm. been insurance. I mean, there's a career. There's an act, you can major in it. It's called being an actuarial. And actuarials are people that long before we had computers, actuarials were people who attempted to predict behavior and patterns based on data sets. I mean, that's the whole career. That's what it's about. And, and a lot of mathematicians go into that model, statisticians go into that model, because they use tools like linear regression, logarithmic regression, discriminant analysis, LISRL, all these things that exist. And these are all statistical modeling tools. So like LISRL is this really fancy way to predict outcomes. And, and put things in groups. It's, it's based on discriminant analysis, which again is a way to put things in groups. So if I can find a pattern that will allow me to predict that you will drive drunk or you will beat up your significant other or that you will commit murders or whatever it is that we think you're gonna do, 
that is what discriminant analysis and logarithmic regression and linear regression is all about. It's about predicting outcomes. But discriminant analysis and LISRA are particularly focused on putting people in groups. So if I can say, here's a group of people that will commit crimes, here's a group of people that don't commit crimes, here's people that might commit crimes, and I can start loading people into those. We've been doing that with pencils and paper. I mean, you can literally do LISRA with a pencil and paper. And this is why it's machine learning, by the way, because this is using a human context and allowing a machine to do this very fast and to mix and match all these things because yeah. a machine can actually go in and take all these techniques that with a pencil and paper would take us years and years and years to just compute one outcome, mm -hmm. could compute infinite numbers of outcomes very, very quickly. And that's what machine learning is all about because it's about I can look at the whole spectrum of everything possible. And that's where we, as we start pulling data in, that's why I started talking about this getting a little bit scarier because it, 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 it was not something we had. So even today... Uh, there was a thing, uh, there was a shooting in New Zealand, oh, yeah. uh, a horrific shooting in New Zealand last week. And uh, one of the things that I saw, I was reading about that, and, and not about the shooting, but about the, the whole thing, was that because nation states don't share information, that that type of information sharing would really benefit all of us if they had known this person who was, who was an Australian uh, who came over, they would have known a lot more about him, but they don't share that kind of data. And if you go look at uh, the United States, go back to say 1950, police agencies did not share any data. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and that was cities, states, towns, counties, sheriffs, they no data sharing, they've right. got some little set of records. So if somebody commits a crime in Mayberry, North Carolina, in 1951, that crime is recorded in a in a you know in a file yeah. in the Mayberry County seat. Yeah. Which what was the name of the Mayberry County seat? Do you remember? No. Was it Raleigh? I, I'm, uh, I'm referring to the Andy Griffith show. Oh if, yeah. If, yeah. He's too too old. Too he's young. too young for that nonsense. <laughs> but but I mean if if that was stored in the county seat. Even though it was there, somebody from there would have had to go dig through these records and go, oh, look, here was a guy, this guy did this before, or we know there was a crime. But if you drove across the county line into the next county, they don't have those records. Yeah, there's and no, like, NCIC or whatever. Not at all. Like, yeah. and, but, but today, in the United States, especially after 9-11, you saw police agencies start adding the capability to exchange data for good reason. I mean, I mean, don't for a second think I'm saying this is a bad thing. I mean, there's a creepy thing there as well, but, but I don't think it's a bad thing right. because it suddenly meant that if somebody was going nuts and ordering 100 million rounds of ammo in Nevada and they were living in New Jersey and they started doing this, the fusion centers, which were set up in every city after 9-11, started sharing data about this. This person gets arrested in Nevada. Maybe that data gets shared. I, it's still not a very good system, I think. I don't think they share data quickly. I don't think they share it in any kind of context like this. But so the NYPD said, we have all this data from just across the, fi the five boroughs. Yep. And what if we shared our own data with each other? Because they didn't even do that. And so they were starting to share data, and they put it into this algorithm. And the algorithm starts linking things together. Now, so again, some of this is stuff we've been doing all along. And some of this wasn't even, uh, it wasn't anything fancy. It was just pattern recognition. So it wasn't using some elaborate machine learning algorithm to derive anything or to predict. It was really just pouring over these pages and pages of data, something a police officer could have done. It might have taken 50 police officers 50 years, but they could have done it and dug it all out. And so to me, it's not truly in the minority report category because they weren't really doing anything we aren't doing now, except they were doing it a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And that's where the creep sort of starts to edge in there. Because as I think about machine learning, I also know that you can make mistakes with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Humans made mistakes with discriminant analysis and LISRA all the time. My, my good friend who's a professor of statistics and a very brilliant guy is always pointing those mistakes out in, in people's papers and things. So if, if, if humans can make mistakes with it, so can machine learning. And I think that's why, you know, Dick had built, uh, you know, a sort of a checksum uh, to, to minimize those failures of those minority reports in, in, in it where they had three cogs, right? right. So uh, three of yeah, them had to three. hit. And, and, and sometimes they wouldn't agree. And right. then, so and they, don't, the they didn't do anything until yeah. they got three solid hits on something right. that says, oh yeah, H Hitler's going to do this, Hitler's going to do this, Hitler's going to do this. Yep. Then they go out and then they, they arrest go. the people yeah. and, and drag them in. So, I mean, that starts to be the sort of first part of this. To me, what happens next in, in our society is 
we start this massive amount of data sharing because today you don't see people carrying cash. I mean, I know some of you do. I know some of the people out there are, are you know, living off the grid in a shack somewhere and, and you know, not watching this show because they'd have to connect or they're watching it through Tor browser or whatever. And, that, and that's fine. That, that's a small portion of people. But a larger portion of people are watching the show using Chrome or, or one of those browsers. They're buying things on Amazon. They're using a credit card. I mean, even kids use credit cards today. So, Mostly their parents. Well, when, when I was in college, you couldn't get a credit card. I mean, it was it was impossible for a college student to get it. In fact, they always encourage you to get a gas card Yeah. because it had a real low limit on it. Yeah. And they said, build your credit so that someday you might be able to get an American Express card. Ooh. But today, you can fill out the form for a cat and get a, a – in fact, I've gotten offers saying, you're pre-approved, Mr. Cat. And my cat's name was Mr. Cat. That wasn't my old cat. But my old cat, Mr. Cat, got a pre-approval one time. All right. And I, was, I really wanted to get the card. I was like, if it wasn't committing a crime, I would have filled out the form. And just to get the card that said Mr. Cat on it. Because it literally said, it said, hey, Mr. Cat, you have been approved based on your great credit history. And I was like, what? Like, Mr. Cat, <laughs> what have you been doing? You have a perfect rating. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm out. That's it. I'm done. I'm not, no. This show is not going to degenerate into a series of puns. It's not. I'm telling you. Especially cat puns. Uh, Although we'd have a lot more viewership if we had kittens on the table. Yeah. You know, which we could do if we want to get our ratings up. Um, today, you do see people talking about this a lot, though, and you see the advent of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, Bitcoin was an attempt to start finding a way to pay for things without being on the record. And I see more interest in that kind of stuff today. Uh, I, I, if, you, if you're if you like me, you get creeped out when you go on Amazon and all the things are popping up. Um, and you're going, wow, that's, that's, uh, yeah, they, how did they know? I, oh, I get it. They, they, when I searched for that on here, yeah, somebody sent me something to look at yesterday. And then after I had looked at it, it was, I won't say what it was, but it was somebody on, on the internet said, oh, you should read this. It's really funny. And I, and I clicked on it and, and of course, uh, it was funny and I laughed a whole lot and I was also like, oh, they make that. But then I realized that now I'm doomed because I didn't use a filtered browser. Yep. And so when I open my Amazon or and my wife opens Amazon yep. later, she's going to be like, what were you buying? I was like, bras, KY jelly. Uh, no, no, it was a lot worse than that. If it was just bras and KY jelly, she'd be like, oh, okay, it's another day. But, but no, this was a lot worse than that. This was like a, a device for, uh, uh, yeah, and, and it was like the size of a, of like a, I don't know. Big a, Bertha? A chainsaw? Yeah. I was like, who, what would, oh, uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into that. We've already had a show about sex dolls, so, yeah. Fire that baby up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it's gas-powered. Um, but, like, but like I say, so with that, with your browsing history, with your credit cards, with your insurance history, which also includes your health history, and there's a book I read, I can't remember the name of it, but they were actually, uh, people were being punished on insurance, and it was, uh, it was like on a sci-fi thing. But there were people that were actually able to live almost forever because they had always lived perfectly. Mm -hmm. And other people had done bad things and smoked cigarettes and or they had drunk alcohol and all these things and they couldn't get, you know, they couldn't get this kind of coverage because they were like, well, you're a person that makes bad choices. But with all that stuff together and we throw it all in a big pot and turn ML loose on it, all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I could see ML finding all kinds of really strange things in this. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I think that, that that's a bit of a problem. I mean, yeah. what do you think? I, I I think so too, and then you incorporate other types of technology. You know how how deep are they going to go? Is are we using facial recognition to determine whether or not somebody's you know f facial uh, geometry is is more uh, has proclivity towards committing mass murder or not? And then are they targeted even further? You know at very well. And I will and say this about the NYPD thing: I was looking at it, and they said that one of the things they had done in there was they limited the the machine learning so that it could not look at race. Mm because they did not want to be accused of racist sure. behavior. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute now. I'm not, I mean, I, 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 I'm certainly not supporting racist stuff, but I mean, you know, now you've taken out, a, a, you know, maybe that matters. I mean, like, w doesn't it matter if a person was white or, or, or Asian or whatever they were when they're committing crimes? Mm -hmm. I mean, it would certainly help me if I was searching for a serial killer and there was like, what's what's the race of the person? Are they black or white? Are they tall or short? No, oh, we can't put any of that stuff in there. No, but I mean, c you know, uh, police uh, and law enforcement have been doing, you know, criminal profiling for years. Yeah. And, and that was part of establishing, you know, some type of, uh, well, what the, what does the what does the uh, suspect look like? Or, you know, is, yeah. you know, 18 to 25. That's why they have age boxes. 18 to 25 year old, you know, Caucasian male you know, with long hair. Now, are we going to preclude people with long hair or not look at that? Or, you know, are people with long hair, uh -huh. you know, more that inclined? Him, yeah, yeah, more inclined. 
inclined to you know do certain things or whatever. Like I could pass for Russian. Rock out and do drugs as people often. He couldn't pass for Russian with the hair. No, I couldn't. Or at least he was. Yeah, the only people I saw with long hair were like these like girls. Well, no art like artsy people at the opera. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the guys that look like exactly like stereotypes of of art. Yeah, the you know art radical type people and whatever. But, I mean, all this stuff adds up to Minority Report. I mean, I, I do think that that is something we're going to have to, very likely even even us older types may have to deal with in our lifetime is the idea of, of turning machine learning loose yeah. on this massive database because all it will take is some awful event. I mean, I mean, some horrific thing like 9-11. Because yeah. so, one of the things that came out of 9-11 was called the Patriot Act. Yeah. And the Patriot Act was this massive attack on civil rights. I mean, I know this is sounding like a political show, no. and it was, but but it, but it was. I mean, they were they were doing all kinds of stuff to suspend people's rights in the interest of safety, and and that's sort of the essence of this piece of security, which is 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 safety worth it? And at some point, people said, yes, it is. I I don't want these bad things to happen anymore. So therefore, I'm willing to to tolerate this loss of privacy, loss of everything, so that I won't have this happening anymore. And you know, and they were able to wiretap people. They could yep, do all this stuff they couldn't do in the yeah, past yeah. because of the Patriot Act. Mm-hmm. And and that was kind of scary to me too. Not even though I don't do anything, but even then, you get this creepy feeling about oh, yeah. it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about a about AI then on this. I mean, what if we add AI to the mix and we we say, okay, forget machine learning for a second. Yeah. What if we just we build systems that that now maybe come up with whole new ways to do this stuff. They can request data. They can they can make new links. They can say, I'm going to start building a new database that you don't even understand. And and that that's that really gets creepy. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get precogs anytime soon because you know that'll not on humans, but yeah. Well, I don't I don't think we're going to have any precogs. That was some kind of mutation or something. I don't remember what that was in the book. It was a mutation. <sighs> yeah, I don't remember. They only myself. got these very rare people, and then they were sort of abusing them because they put them in tanks of water and they didn't have anything. But when we see these like horrible gun gun attacks or we see bombings or we see all these things people are constantly saying let's let's go ahead and do this and i, I don't know that i'm opposed to it yeah. I, I mean i i hope it wouldn't be spitting me out as a potential problem because for me i just don't really do anything that would that would and i know the privacy people that immediately say yeah you say you don't do anything but what about when this thing makes a mistake and it says oh you went to russia a eh? um and, and i mean and i will tell you from history that Russ and I went to Russia th- last week, and there have been times in history when if that was on our record, it would have been a big problem, like, yeah. say, in 1950. Well, we went to Israel last year, and, and they give you a visa. Right? Normally, they would you know sticker it or, or stamp it in your passport book, but because of other countries and their laws, well, uh, yeah, with I mean, that, they, they give you a separate piece of paper that you just fold into the passport. And that was just analog, you know, yeah. doing this by analog. But I'm, I'm thinking more like, you know, so now 10 years from now, they say, "Oh, you went to the you went to Russia, did you? Yeah. Hmm. We're gonna have to review your case because you went to Russia, and and, and I worry about things changing over time. You know, sure. theoretically, of course, these models should should resolve that. Uh, the other problem I have is with people screwing up statistics. Um, humans have a great uh, proclivity to misuse a statistic, a statistic, uh, yeah. uh, 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 a stat, st- statistics. Uh, there's an old saying that that there's lies, there's damned lies, and there's statistics. <laughs> And uh, one of the things that we hear people talk about is something significant. And I literally heard, heard a person who had a PhD, and I've heard it more than once, a person with a PhD who was saying, uh, it, I know the result's not significant, but if it, if it changed just a little bit, that's still something relevant. And I'm like, no, it's not. Because if something isn't significant, what it means in statistics is that it's not significantly different from yep. zero. And that means that you can't start saying, yeah, it, it maybe shifts a little bit. His his tendency is a little bit. No, 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 no. It's not significant. But it's very hard to start explaining those things to just everybody and anyone. And as you start creating these kind of systems, it starts to become a little bit of a problem. The other piece I want to talk about with security in this was about the, the, the sanctity of this data. So once you start letting people have access to it, who has access to it? Uh, one of the other things I had a, a concern about going to Russia and going to China was... Uh, the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget from the United States government had notified me two years ago that all of my top secret data was lost, that it was hacked, that someone extracted it, that they thought it was probably a nation state. They don't know who. And I'm like, well, gee, thanks, guys, because there's a giant fat folder on me uh, with the top secret clearance uh, documents that was stolen by a foreign nation state. 
and you start to wonder exactly what they're doing with that data. And so as these giant databases become consolidated by machine for machine learning purposes, who's protecting that data? And I, and I think that's one of the real issues we're gonna have to deal with as a society, because this is again back to sort of Philip K. Dick type stuff. Mm -hmm. Who, what's going to be done with the data? So, could there be a mistake? Yep. Could machine learning make the same kind of mistakes that humans make? Well, sure it could, because machine learning is based on human human approaches. So, if, if the person who puts the Lizrel algorithm in there doesn't understand Lizrel, or can't pronounce it like me, um, if they don't understand discriminant analysis and, and they don't use their horns test correctly, that's for you, Lou. <laughs> um, they don't use their horns test correctly. Um, the, the machine learning algorithm may well make the exact same mistakes that this PhD who was telling me that, that even though it's not significant, it's still significant, significant yeah. uh, kind of makes. And, and that becomes problematic. Uh, we could certainly see a loss of privacy from this kind of stuff because yeah. if they start collecting data on you and they start extracting data on you, they may actually start building new data. And then I think the, the third part of the model is, is, is AI gets involved. Yeah. AI may start coming up with new data sets based on stuff that we don't even understand. It's, it's gonna, I don't even know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not smart enough to understand all that stuff. So it really starts to get a little bit scary, I think, for all of us going forward. Now, what do we do about it? So, I mean, I think that's the ultimate question we ask here is, is what are we gonna do about, about this? And, and I think the answer is we're just gonna have to learn to deal with it somehow. I know that's a lame answer, but I, I don't think you're going to stop it, um, not unless we just completely change the way everything works. If we get rid of our credit cards and we only use Bitcoin and we live in a shack in Red Cloud, Colorado with no electricity and no running water and, you know, we go back to the way it used to be. Uh, I mean, people then were off the grid, you know, 100 years ago. But today, it's not easy to be off the grid. I mean, just to go fly to Moscow, I mean, I had to put my information into a Russian database. I had to put my information into a U.S. database. Yeah. And you can say, well, don't fly to Moscow then, Doug. Just uh, go sit in your shack up in Red Cloud. And I'm like, well, I don't really want to sit in a shack in Red Cloud and watch the, watch the world go by. I mean, I, I want to be out here and have fun. Yeah, and you can't even move back to an all-cash society, you know, because you've got computers controlling the value of it. So, you know what I mean? Unless you're going to barter now, you know, my six chickens for your one flat-screen well, yeah, television. That, that ain't going to work. No, I mean, I, I, mean, know. I mean, that that's, that is kind of the Bitcoin world of, of, you know, we're just basically bartering with these these tokens, which, of course, is what cash is, too. But a lot of places won't even take cash. Remember the parking yeah. garage? $15 if you wanted to pay by cash, yeah. in addition to what Right, it was. because they don't want to fool with cash. They want you to use a credit card because they don't have cash in their little booth they don't have to worry about getting robbed because all those charges go through plus you know they don't worry about counterfeit money and all these kind of stuff all this with good citizen programs uh if you haven't watched black mirror nosedive go watch that and you'll you'll get a good feel for exactly what we're talking about in that regard china's doing it they already have it in place uh you want to get vip state you can make it positive you can say why don't you be a vip you get better seats on the plane because yeah. you've got a good citizen score that's through the roof uh, you've got good credit. You're a good citizen. You've got all these things, so you could do all these other things. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to treat you for that to try to encourage that behavior, which is what China's trying to do. Yep. They want you to praise the state, and they don't want you to, cr to be critical. And if you do, you're going to suffer for it. And I think all those things add up to a very, very frightening kind of thing in that regard. But at the same time, if we could stop crime, I mean, I'll, I'll go right back to the beginning. If I could tell you that my algorithm can predict school shootings, or mass shootings, or, or even can predict car accidents, and I could stop those things from happening, you may say, I don't want that. But if I say, well, could I pre predict who's gonna molest your kids? I, I, mean, I could get all these algorithms and I can say, that guy right there, the likelihood that guy right there is gonna be a child molester is about 90%. And you go, uh, you'd probably be thanking me then, but uh, he might not. And he's going, I, I, no, I've never done any such thing. Mm -hmm. So it's there's all these different. This is a huge ethics problem. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get involved in this, this is this is what you talk about in ethics classes. Yeah. Is why you read Kurt Vonnegut novels and Philip K. Dick novels because that's exactly what these guys are talking about. ML gets more powerful all the time. The ability to access more data is growing every day. The ability to link databases together, maybe even transnational, because you you saw it now. Uh, the NZ government is saying, why aren't we sharing data with Australia? It won't be long before somebody says, well, yep. what if an Australian flies to California? Because they can do that. Yep. Uh, don't we want to know about those people? And we say, well, we're going to share all our data. And, and as all that stuff gets linked together, suddenly there's a security problem of, well, can I just link it all together, throw it into my crazy AI-driven algorithm, which acts then like the precog in the Philip K. Dick story, and the, uh, the AI somehow predicts, so if my three AIs, I'll predict you're going to be a, a child molester, here come the police and you get arrested or maybe that just turns into Skynet. I don't know.
or s- behavioral therapy or something along those lines. Well, yeah, they don't have know? to throw you in a pit somewhere. Yeah. They could send you to, but I mean, you know, okay, I, I, do you really want to get grabbed? And, you know, you go into work one day and they pull you over and go, we predicted you're going to do something bad in the next five years. We're going to send you to the, to the Gulag uh, Psychiatric Clinic. And they're going to try to straighten you out before it even happens. And I don't think anybody's going to like that. But then again, all it takes is one horrendous event. Yep. And all of a sudden, everybody's affected. My last point on this was, what if AI could start predicting not just your behavior, but the behavior of your descendants? Uh, so this is my sci-fi story. So if you write it, at least please give me a credit. Um, my, my sci-fi story about it is that AI can predict <laughs> your grandchildren's behavior. So based on your DNA and your current history, he says, well, the data we have, we can predict that in two generations, this person is going to raise the next Hitler. And they, they start going out and saying, you can't reproduce because we, we've predicted that you shouldn't be allowed no. to reproduce. So much for nature versus nurture. Well, yeah, exactly. I'm like, round them up. Round them up, boys. Just mm-hmm. be sure and sign up to be on the, good, the, the side of the police then. And you can be Tom Cruise in the movie mm-hmm. instead of being the person that's getting tossed in the clinic and neutered. But speaking of neutering... Cat sticks. <laughs> I, I, we have no idea. Tastes this like is chicken. Here. We don't know what this is. It says it tastes like chicken. So if you do have interest in eating cat meat sticks, and it's not made of cat meat, it's a Sheba meat stick. I, that's a voice in my head is speaking to me, telling me it's a Sheba. We, they're not a sponsor, so I'm not trying to sell this. To you. It's a Sheba cat meat stick, although it's not made of cats. It's supposedly it's made of all kinds of chicken, pork, turkey, pork rinds, brewer's yeast, animal plasma. Oh, yummy. Boy, I bet that's a fun place to and work. Somebody Dump in the plasma, John. <laughs> okay, we got we to gotta stop yeah. there. It's going to get out of hand. But anyway, thank you for joining us today to talk about Minority Report. Uh, we'll see you next time with something new, I'm sure, unless we get put in a gulag in the meantime or the AI decides we need to be neutered. <laughs> <laughs>